And uh, let's take our Bibles. We're going to turn to the book of 2 Peter, chapter number 1. 2 Peter, chapter number 1. Boy, I'm sure glad to see you here the first Sunday of the new year. And uh, if, if you're like many folks in the new year, you make some new decisions, you uh, decide you're going to set some goals for the new year. And for, uh, for each believer, if I could encourage you to do one thing, one thing, it's what I'm going to preach on today. Um, you say, if, if you told a new believer, what do you need to do to grow? What would you tell them? Well, I'd like to tell you, you need to stay in church. That's very important. Um, it's very easy to get out of church. It is. It's easy to, you know, the floor's cold and you're tired and the pillow's soft. Uh, to decide, well, I'll just stay at home today. Now, look, I know there are folks at home, you're, you're ill or you're quarantined or you're traveling. I get that. So I'd tell folks, you need to be in church. Uh, I'd tell folks, you know, you need to pray. You need to spend time in prayer with the Lord. Uh, I'd tell folks, you need to um, give. You need to give God the first of your finances. Give Him uh, that which is His, that which is right. What you do with that which is least will in, will in many ways determine what you do with more important things. And it's amazing when you put God first how God can make things work financially. Uh, I'd tell you to live a holy life. I'd tell you to maintain friendships with people who love the Lord and who serve the Lord. I'd tell you to be a soul winner. I'd tell you to go out and witness for Jesus Christ. Take tracks with you. Speak up for Christ. But if I could only pick one thing to tell you, if you said, Pastor, you have to limit it to one, then it would be what I'm going to preach this morning. And I'll tell you why. Because if you will do this one thing, faithfully, regularly, it will lead you to do all those other things. See, if you do what I'm going to preach this morning, if you will actually do it, you'll stay in church. Uh, if you'll do if, what I'm going to tell you this morning, uh, you'll, you'll put God first. If you do what I'm going to tell you this morning, you won't be able to help but spend time in prayer. Uh, if you do what I'm going to tell you this morning, you'll be a soul winner. If you'll do what I tell you this morning from God's word. In fact, Jesus said it this way in Luke 10. There were so many passages I wanted to preach this morning. I can't preach them all. Don't say amen. But uh, Luke 10, what did Jesus say? He said, one thing is needful. One. Does that mean all those other things aren't needful? No, it means if you'll do this one thing, all those other things will follow. And uh, I want us to understand this morning the necessity of each believer being in this book every single day of your life. You know, we, we don't have to be told to eat every day, do we? Hey, set your alarm. It's time to eat. Now, some of you might eat strictly on a schedule like that. Most of us don't have to be told. You have to eat today. Why? Because there's already a hunger pain. There's always something, already something spurring you to eat. You know, if you can get to that place spiritually where you're, you're empty of the junk of the world and you're just so hungry for this book every day, it'll transform your life. It'll transform your 2022. Let's look at 2 Peter 1, verse 1. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the way, notice, if you're going to be righteous, if you're going to be saved, if you're going to be forgiven, it won't be through your righteousness. It'll be through Jesus' righteousness. Verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And don't miss this. According as His divine power hath given unto us, what's the next word? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Now don't miss what that just said. Some of you are going to walk out of here and you're going to ignore what that just said. And this one simple decision that you're going to make today, and every one of us will make this decision today, this one decision will determine whether or not this year is blessed, happy, prosperous spiritually, whether your life will count as much as it possibly can in 2022, depending on the decision you make today, or 
you're going to miss out on a whole lot of things God has in store for you. I want you to notice verse 3 says, His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. This book will tell you how you should rule your finances. So I'm struggling with finances, Pastor. I want you to I want to know what I should do with my finances. This book will tell you. Say, my marriage is struggling. I need to know what to do with my marriage. This book will tell you. I need to know how to raise my kids. I want my kids to turn out right and serve God with their lives. I don't want them to waste their lives like so many young people are doing today. What do I do? This book will tell you. I want my marriage to be intimate. I want to know about that part of marriage. This book will tell you about that. I want to know how to be a witness for Christ. I want to know about living a holy life. I want to know about science. Guess what? God invented science. This book will tell you about that. I'm telling you that God has given us, He's already provided all things that we need right here in this book, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Notice, through the knowledge of Him who hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these, these precious promises, ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world, through lust. Lord, speak to our hearts this morning. I again ask you to fill me with your spirit and Lord, help every listener to be filled with your spirit. And those who are not saved, may they trust you as Savior today. Be honored and glorified, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This book has all the answers that you need. This book will tell you what things that are to come. If you look down in verse 20 of chapter 1, it says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Say, this book was written by man. No, I'm going to tell you what this book is. God used 40 men over 1,500 years to pen down these words. But don't mistake this. This, folks, is the word of God. This is not a word of man. This is the word of God. And God used men. If I took a pen and I wrote you a letter, you wouldn't get that letter and say, oh, look, a pen wrote me a letter. You'd say, pastor wrote me a letter. But guess what? I used a tool. You know what those men were? They were tools in God's hands to put his words down. And so this prophecy isn't of any private interpretation. There's nobody who has a corner on the Bible. You don't have to have a PhD or a bunch of letters after your name to understand the Bible. What you need is to read it and study it and to ask the Holy Spirit to open it to you. Say, Pastor, I just don't understand the Bible. Here's how a lot of people try to understand the Bible. Well, let's see. Uh, David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, Lord. Lord, help me understand your word. They sleep on it. Lord, I hope by osmosis, I just the words jump out of the page and into my brain. You know, you know what you have to do to understand the Bible? It's really simple. I know we're looking for something deep this morning. I'm going to tell you, you're not going to get much deeper than this. You know what you need to do? You need to read it. Say, Pastor, I know that. Okay, did you do it? I, I read it. I need to read it. Brother Josh, I taught Bible study methods in college for years. I taught it so many times. So many times. The first day of class, here's what I would do. I'd say, all right, everybody, put away your, put away everything. You're going to take a quiz. And I'd be like, First day of class, a quiz. Pull out a sheet of paper. You're going to write, you're not going to write your name. You're going to write one letter. One letter on this sheet of paper. You're going to put a Y for yes or an N for no. You're going to write it down. You're going to fold it in half twice. We're going to collect them. And I'm going to find out what the numbers are. And then I'd write a number on the board, 40 slash 60. Sometimes it was that exact number. Sometimes it was just a few percent off. Here was the question. And these were two people entering the ministry. These were the people who were going to be preachers. These are to people who are going to be missionaries and evangelists and assistant pastors. And I'd say, here's the question. Freshman class, Bible study methods. Have you ever read through the entire Bible? And I got, I'd done it so many times. I could write that number, and it was almost always either exactly that number or somewhere right around that number, 40% had read the Bible through. 60% who are going to be preachers of the Word of God. 60% who are going to be missionaries. 60% who are going to be evangelists. 60% who are going to stand up and declare the Word of God had never even read it. 
God help us. And that's why when you said in Sunday school, you said, uh, you said, boy, I, I don't want to read all this. Uh, I, I, have, I have more content. The word of God is your content. That is your content. And I appreciate it. You, you taught a scriptural message. That is your content. The world doesn't need our cycle babble. The world doesn't need our illustrations as much as it needs this book. I'm telling you now, if there's one thing I could tell a believer, I know when a believer is growing. I know they are. I know because they're in this book. You can't help but read this. You can't help but grow if you're in this book. I'm telling you now, this book is the key to your spiritual growth this year. It's more relevant than your news feed. It is timeless. And the wisdom you need for life this year, you have whatever issue it is. I don't care if it's your finances or your marriage or you're raising your children. The, the wisdom you need comes from this book. Say, well, pastor, then I'll just come to church every week. You should. But guess what? You need this book tomorrow morning. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by, what are the next two words? By every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word. Uh, how are you going to know every word if you're not reading it? Say, pastor, I struggle with reading. Then I want to encourage you to listen to it. Uh, you can get a Bible app. You can get, hey, some of you still, you can get cassette tapes. Does anybody still know what that is? Some of young people are going, what is that? Tape. You stick things on the wall with it. No? We used to listen to things on tape. Some of you may be 8-track. I don't know. <laughs> I, the point is, I don't care how you get it in. Say, I, I, no, that's what was one person last year said, that feels like cheating. Guess what? It's a whole lot better than what you did last year. Yeah. What would you do last year? You just didn't do it. Right? Well, I've got, to, I've got to sit down and go through the grind. It is work to read the Bible. It is. But I'm just telling you, find a way to get the Bible into your life every day. We need, what did Jesus say? Give us this day our daily bread. Is that just physical bread we need this day? No, it's spiritual bread. We need it every day, daily. Say, Pastor, I'll just come to church and hear you preach on topics. That's wonderful, but you need it every day, every day. The Bible says the Lord giveth wisdom. So I need wisdom. I lack wisdom in a certain area of my life. I'm going to tell you where to get it. The Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 21.30, there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. The wisdom you need for your life comes from the word of God. And you need that wisdom daily. And by the way, I want to tell you how important God thinks his word is. You know, we just came through the Christmas season. We still have the Christmas decorations up. I love them. We might keep the tree up till March. How many of you are keeping your tree up till March? Don't raise your hand. I know some of you do it, though, right? <laughs> the lights are up all year, right? We might do that. We never know. Uh, we just talked about, hey, speak the name of Jesus this Christmas season. Don't be afraid to say the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid to speak up about Christ. Amen? Amen. Hey, guess what? At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. How, much more, how much more important is God's word? Say, whoa, whoa, pastor, then the name of Jesus? Listen to what God said. Psalm 138 says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. How important does God say his word is? And no wonder he says that when everything we need for life and everything we need for godliness is in this book. To have the Word of God, the King James Bible, sitting there, not to open it, not to read it, is like a starving man having a fridge and a freezer full of food, but never opening the fridge and never opening the freezer. It's like a poor man who can't, doesn't have two nickels to rub together, but he has treasures galore in a safe, but he never opens the safe. Who needs instructions, but never reads them. Does anybody know what that's about? Do you have anything you had to assemble this Christmas season? I don't need the instructions. What are those seven extra parts? We don't need those. It's like not reading the instructions for life. 
Listen, I, I, I beg you. Say, who are you upset at? I'm not upset at anybody. I'm begging you to understand what you're missing out on if you don't crack this book open every day. If you don't say, God, I'm so hungry, I need your word today. If you don't get into God's word, all you have is your thoughts and your psychology and what this culture's giving you. You know, God's word and a hunger for it brings real blessing and happiness. Look at Psalm 1, if you would, please. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Say, Pastor, I just don't have time to read through the Bible. Can I tell you, it takes the average reader 15 minutes a day to read through the Bible. 15 minutes a day. Let's say you're a bad reader, 30 minutes a day. Say, Pastor, you don't understand how busy my life is. Well, I'm going to tell you this. It might be you need to put down the remote. It might be you need to put down the game controller. It might be you need to put down the newspaper, the golf club, and whatever else God is telling you right now. And pick this book up. Fifteen. Could you, could you give, if I said, hey, I want you to sacrifice this year. Would you sacrifice for God? Will you give him 1% of your day? 1%. That seems pretty paltry, doesn't it? I mean, 1%. Shouldn't we give God more than 1%? Yes, we should. But could you give him 1% of your day? For your benefit. For your blessing. For your enrichment. The greatest investment you'll ever make in yourself is investing your time in this book. Say, Pastor, you wouldn't tell us to come to church? If I could only tell you one thing, I'll tell you again. If I could only tell you one, it would be getting this book. You know why? If you get in this book, you'll be in church. You will. Psalm 1 says, blessed. You know what that word means? It means happy to the bone. I mean through and through happy. How many of you want to be happy? Say, some of you say, no, I want to be miserable. <laughs> I want to be a grump. No. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. There's plenty of counsel out there, but a lot of it's ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But notice, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Meditates what a cow does when it chews its cud. It just it chews and, and swallows and chews and swallows and makes it more and more a part of its life. And that's what you ought to do with the Word of God. You ought to take pieces of the Word of God and turn them around in your mind and be meditating upon them so they're in your heart and in your mind and in your mouth so you can share them with others. Notice what will be the blessing for that man. Verse 3, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. How many of you want to be prosperous in 2022? God just told you how to be prosperous. Joshua 1.8 says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. It needs to be in your mind. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do. It needs to be in your mannerisms. According to all, uh, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Some of you are chasing the success as defined by this world. You're going to find that all that glitters is not gold. What this world has to offer passes away. Love not the, hey, there, there are things more valuable than the bigger paycheck. I'm not saying don't get a bigger paycheck. We need the tithe. <laughs> yeah, amen. Say, boy, that preacher only preaches on money. Then you haven't been here very long. <laughs> yeah, we need the tithe. Uh, but I'll tell you this, God's going to do his work. He's going to accomplish his work, but you get to be a part of it. I get to be a part of it. But what I'm telling you is this, there are much more important things than a bigger paycheck. A whole lot more important things. Uh, success as determined by the world is not success. I could list, and that's not my goal this morning, but I could list celebrity after celebrity after celebrity after celebrity who has this world's success. 
and they're going to die and leave it all behind. And many of them are miserable in this life because they're chasing a pipe dream. They're chasing something this world has to offer that will leave you empty. The Bible says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. He'll literally plant the right desires in your heart, and then he'll meet those desires. And if you want happiness, if you want success as God defines success, then you must be in this book every day. Would you give, look, let's just forget about giving 1% to God every day. Would you give 1% for the betterment of your family every day? Would you give 1% for the betterment of your finances every day? Would you give 1% for the betterment of your marriage, of your society, of your world, of the lost souls around you? Then you need to make a commitment this year to get in this book. This book gives us patience. It also gives us comfort. Romans 15, 4 says, Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. I want to remind you of this. There are many seasons of life. Don't miss this. Hey, you young people, I'm somewhere in between now. I'm not old. Some days I feel old, but I'm not. To some of you, I'm still wet behind the ears and green. I know that. But I'm somewhere in the middle now. But what I'll tell you is this, especially you young people, you need to hear this. There are many seasons of life. Things change. You know, Solomon tried everything this world had to offer, and what did he say? Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And there are seasons of your life, you know what you're going to need more than anything else? You're going to need the comfort of these scriptures. Storms come to every life whether you're serving God or whether you're not serving God. And those whose lives are built on the solid foundation of Jesus and His Word, you'll stand through those storms. Those storms will come, doesn't matter who you are. And this book will give you comfort, the Word of God. It will keep you from sin. Psalm 119.11, by the way, sin is so destructive. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay. It'll cost you more than you want to pay. And you can either keep this word in your heart or you can keep sin in your heart. But listen, you can't have both. One will drive out the other. This book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. Go to this book. Go to the word of God. We sing a song with the kids. We, maybe we should sing some more of these songs in service instead of just hymns. And we sing hymns too. But maybe we need to sing, read your Bible, pray every day. How many of you heard that song before? Is that one of the hymns of the faith? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, we sing it at Kids Crusade. Get all the kids in here, read your Bible, pray every day. And the reason we don't do it in the adult service is all our backs are too bad. That's why we don't do it. Pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. And then you start like this. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Let me go to this mic. I want to sing this song. Here we go. <laughs> and you'll grow. Testing, testing, testing. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. That's true. I'm going to tell you now, I can tell who's growing. If you're in that book, if you're reading the Word of God for yourself. But... Neglect your Bible. I'm too busy today. My favorite show is on. Is that a great investment? I'm not telling you don't ever watch your favorite show or ever go to the golf course again. What I'm telling you is just with a little bit of organization, with a little bit of planning, you could make God's Word a priority in your life. You can do it. Neglect your Bible. Forget to pray. Forget to pray. Forget to pray. Neglect your Bible. Forget to pray. I don't care how long you've been saved. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Yeah, but I've been saved 30 years. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. I'm a Sunday school teacher. 
I'm a bus captain. I know the Bible. I've read it through before. Have you eaten before too? But you still need food today. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. What am I telling you? I'm telling you, you need this book for 2022. You need it for today. You need it for tomorrow. There's so much God has for you. It will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. And by the way, it will keep you from destruction. Nobody decides they're going to destroy their life. Nobody says, you know what, today I think I'll destroy my life. You know what happens? You neglect God's principles and one step at a time, slowly, like the frog in the boiling water. Slowly, it leads to destruction. God said about his people, not the lost world, his people. Hosea 4, 6, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that somebody grasping onto worldly principles, living their lives based on worldly principles and refusing to hear what God's Word says for many reasons. And their life's being destroyed. Whereas just a few changes from the Word of God could just completely alter their life for a good purpose. God's Word will set you apart from the world. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of Him and of His words... There's a lot of people who like to claim Jesus, but they don't want to claim His Word. They don't want to claim what His Word says. If you're ashamed of me and of my words, He said, in this adulterous and sinful gener generation, He said, the Son of Man will be ashamed of you when He comes. Loving the Word of God. Uh, listen, the, the further this world goes, the more people who love this book are going to look different from the world. And that's how it ought to be. You know, and when the world, when someone in the world needs to be saved, they don't need to go to a place that looks just like what they came out of. You know what they need? They need something different. They need Jesus. They need His Word. God's Word will set you apart from the world. It will protect you from deadly error. Jesus said to the Sadducees who did not believe in a resurrection, they, were, they believed themselves to be scientists. They didn't believe anything they couldn't prove for themselves. They didn't believe in the supernatural God. Jesus said to them, Ye do err. Not knowing the scriptures, neither the power of God. He said, you're, you're just basing your life on everything you can see and feel and touch, your senses. You're missing out on the greatest things of life. Not only will it protect you from deadly air because you'll know what the book says, but I want to remind you this, your enemy has read the book. It would be a shame for Satan to know more of the Bible than you do. You remember when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness? What did Satan do? Does anybody remember? What did he do? He quoted Scripture. He quoted Scripture to Jesus. He said, hey, this is what the Scripture says. What did Jesus do? Jesus knew he was pulling it out of context. So what did he do? He said, it is written. It is written. It is written three times. The Son of God took the Word of God and stuck Satan with it. Three times. It is written. It is written. It is written. You know, if you'll know what this book says cults and heretics and deceivers won't be able to lead you astray. Listen, many people are committed to a body of doctrine or are committed to a movement, but they're not committed to what God's Word says. I'm going to tell you something. I don't want a movement. I don't want a body of doctrine. I want what this book says. I want what God's Word says. Acts 17, 11 says, they were more noble than those in Thessalonica, the Berean church. Why? They received the word with all readiness of mind. When it was preached, they listened. When it was taught, they soaked it in. But then, what did they do? It says they, uh, they, they that were in uh, Thessalonica, they were more noble than those in Thessalonica and that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures, what's the next word? Daily. Whether those things were so. You won't get hoodwinked by a phony preacher if you know what this book says. Say, but brother so-and-so preaches it this way. Okay, what does brother Jesus say? <laughs> or Father God, you know? What, what does the Son of God Jesus say? What's the Holy Spirit say? That's what I'm interested in. God's Word will set you apart from the world. It will protect you from deadly air. Paul warned Timothy, he said, study to show thyself approved unto God. Don't worry about what the people around you think. 
Don't worry about impressing brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so or the world. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then in 2 Timothy 3, he said that the scripture is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be per perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Last of all, the Word of God will point you to salvation. We saw last week John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who was that Word? Somebody tell me, who was it? It's Jesus. And listen to what Jesus said, John 5.39. He said, Search the Scriptures. How can you do that if you're not reading them? Search the Scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Did you know cults and those who preach false doctrine, they use a Bible, many of them, to preach their false doctrine. Did you hear what I said? They use the Bible to preach their false doctrine. Jesus said, search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. You know what the Bible does? If we could sum it up, the whole Bible, the whole Bible, the whole thing, even some of the tough parts, all of it, centers on and it points to one person, Jesus Christ. Uh, there are many other things Jesus did which are not written in this book, but these things are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through His name. The Silver Bible Challenge is here next week. I'll say even more about it. I'll encourage you to sign up for it. It's not a test of fellowship. But I'm telling you, if you can invest one thing in your life this year, one thing that will transform your life is if you'll take this matter seriously. You'll realize how valuable this book is. You'll get into it every day. Child of God, there's so much here for you. God has waiting for you. Would you commit your life again, afresh, anew, to the Word of God in 20? 22. Let's bow our heads together, please. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. It may be that you're here today and the truth is you're not even saved. Can I tell you what this book points to? It points to the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth, God in the flesh. We just celebrated that this Christmas time. Why did He have to come in the flesh? He came in the flesh to suffer on the old rugged cross for our sins. He paid the sin debt for us. The Bible says God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus paid the price for your sins. He took the guilt, the shame, the pain of all your sins upon Himself on the cross. He died, He was buried, and He rose again, and He conquered sin and death and hell and the grave. And the Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God wants to forgive you today. He wants to save you. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Who would say, Pastor, that's me. I need to be saved. I'm concerned about my soul. I'm not 100% sure that if I died today, I'm go I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure about that. I want to get it settled. Please pray for me. If that's you, would you lift your hand right now? Lift it up until I see it. I need to be saved. Pastor, pray for me. Our heads are still bowed. Our eyes are still closed. Who would say, Pastor, I have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm saved not because I'm a perfect person, but because I have a perfect Savior who paid the penalty of my sin for me, and I want to thank Him and praise Him for saving me. If that's you, would you lift your hand? Would you thank Him for saving you? Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. This is a matter between you and God. My head is bowed, my eyes are closed. Who would say, dear Lord, I commit myself afresh and anew to somehow, some way, get your word into my heart, into my mind every day. Say, well, I can't do what other people do. I'm not as good a reader, or I don't have the same time other people do. You can do something. You can do something to get the word of God into your heart and your life every day, and it'll transform your life. Who would commit to that this year and say, Lord, Here's my hand, Lord. I commit afresh, anew, to dive into the treasures of your book, of your word. If that's you, would you lift your hand to the Lord? Listen, God wants so much for you. He wants so many blessings for you, and they're in this book. He's given us all things. 
that pertain to life and godliness through those exceeding precious promises. Lord, help us to take this matter seriously and realize how, how important it is. We are not to live, we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Help us to understand how much we need your word every day. What a blessing it is for us to be able to read your word every day. Help us to do it in Jesus' name. As the music